Good morning, everyone. My name is Suzanne Hallfrich, and uh, I'm a member of the Sunday Services Committee and a grateful member of this community since 2017. Coming to these last, coming here to you, you these last few years has been a blessing in my life. I well recall my first two Sundays here sitting with Joan Campbell. And uh, I knew enough to know that a new life would, re would require that I fill it with new connections. So uh, I came here and UU has provided that space and I have found so many friends and I'm so grateful to be here. The Unitarian Universalists of Danbury has been gathering together for 200 years. And as we work to build a more just world, we respectfully acknowledge that our physical building is on the traditional land of the Pagasset people. I am so glad you are able to join us this morning because you are an essential part of our celebration today. Whether today is your first or your thousandth Sunday in our midst, in person or online, we are stronger, stronger because you are with us. If you are new to our community and joining us, joining us online, we invite you to introduce yourself and where you are connecting from in the chat box as you are comfortable. At the conclusion of today's services, you will have a chance to participate in a breakout group for individual connections and deeper check-ins. If you are new and here in person, please fill out a visitor card at the table near the exit before you leave today. We are one people of many beliefs, many origins, many sexualities and genders. We are all growing, all learning, all loved. Just as you are, you are welcome here. And now, if I can ask you to turn to your announcements, I did want to bring your attention to one of special import. It's uh, maybe a little self-serving, but we're very proud of our lineup this summer of, uh, of services that we've done with the uh, Sunday Services Committee. So next week, we are very excited because Joe Gelati will be uh, leading us in a service on Buddhist and Hindu stories and proverbs. How do we learn and what went wrong? Insights into Buddhist and Hindu stories with powerful messages, yet simple explanations. That sounds great. And I really, really hope to see all of you here and all of you online as well. We hope to see you 
either here or here, and uh, we'll have a great time with that one. Okay, let us take a moment now, if you would, and turn around and say good morning to your friends around you and to our Zoomers and here in the hall. We're happy that you have chosen to share your morning with us. And now with a special song of welcome, our wonderful Jerry. Please join me. Okay. He was born in the summer of his 27th year. Coming home to a place he'd never been before. He left yesterday behind him. You might say he was born again. You might say he found a key for every door. When he first came to the mountains, his life was far away. On the road and hanging by a song. But the string's already broken and he doesn't really care. It keeps changing fast and it don't last for long. With the Colorado Rocky Mountain High, we've seen it rain and fire in the sky. The shadow from the starlight is softer than a lullaby. Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. He climbed cathedral mountains, he saw silver clouds below. He saw everything as far as you can see. And they say he got crazy once and he tried to touch the sun. He lost a friend but kept the memory. Now he walks in quiet solitude, the forests and the streams, seeking grace in every step he takes. His sight has turned inside himself to try and understand the serenity of a clear blue mountain lake. But the Colorado Rocky Mountain High seen it rain and fire in the sky. Talk to God and listen to the casual reply. Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. Now his life full of wonder, but his heart still knows some fear of a simple thing he cannot comprehend. Why they try to tear the mountains down to bring in a couple more, more people, more scars upon the land. Colorado, Rocky Mountain High. saw an eagle fly, Rocky Mountain High, Colorado, Rocky Mountain High, Colorado, it's a Colorado, Rocky Mountain High, I've seen it rain and fire in the sky. A campfire and everybody's high. Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. Rocky Mountain High, Colorado.
please join me in reciting the words on the screen of our chalice lighting affirmation. Okay, I'm going to have to read it. Love is the spirit of this congregation, and justice is his life. This is our covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek and speak the truth in love, to help each other, and to celebrate life. And with a special shout out to any kiddos on Zoom this morning, we have our children's Unitarian affirmation. With our U's in the air, we are Unitarian Universalists. We are people with open minds, loving hearts, and helping hands. We care for the earth and each other. And now for a story. We are water protectors. Reading time with Ring Around Renina. Our book today is called We Are Water Protectors, written by Carol Lindstrom, illustrated by Michaela Gold. Michaela Gold is my favorite indigenous artist, especially because she illustrates children's books. In fact, I'm collecting all her books because she is just amazing. We Are Water Protectors, written by Carol Lindstrom, illustrated by Michaela Gold. Water is the first medicine, Nokomis told me. We come from water. It nourished us inside our mother's body as it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. The river's rhythm runs through my veins runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land, spoil the water, poison plants and animals, wreck everything in its path. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many, many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land, courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. And of course, this snake is a metaphor of the Dakota Access Pipeline that happened in 2016. Unfortunately, it's still pushed through. So it's still poisoning the water right now. Take courage. I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together. Oh, there's a beaver, there's some fish, a turtle. To stand for the water, to stand for the land, to stand as one against the black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. It will not be easy. We fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. The winged ones, the crawling ones, the four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes, the earth. We are all related. Such a beautiful illustration over here. Look at all the animals. Tears like waterfalls stream down, tracks down my face. They're crying, tracks down my people's faces. Water has its own spirit, Nokomis told me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. We stand. The black snake is in for the fight of its life. 
the end. And over here, there's a glossary of the terms. And this is more information about what happened to the Dakota Access Pipeline. And here's a note from Michaela Gold, the illustrator. And it's cool too, you have a pledge over here and then you can read this to your children or to your students. And then you can write your classroom name and then the date because you pledge to protect the water. The end. Okay. So join us now as we sing This Little Light of Mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. Okay, now is the time to share our personal milestones, those joys lifting us up and any sorrows weighing us down. The recording is stopped during this time, so we may share freely. If you are online, please. And I'm following along here. That's it. Uh, it is time for our congregational offering. If you are with us for the first time, your presence is your gift to us. Members and friends online, please express your generosity by using the link or QR code found on the screen or in the chat. If you prefer, you may send a check to UUCD at 24 Clapper Ridge Road, Danbury 06811. Thank you for doing your part to support and sustain this community we love. We're so pleased to have Marianne speaking with us today. So Marianne, why don't you come on up and share the message with us. Good morning, can you hear me in the back? Oh good, okay. Um, a couple of years back, this congregation voted to be fossil fuel free by 2030, correct me if I'm wrong here, um, Donna or Gary. Um, and the, what kind of what got me started on this, this topic is that back around Earth Day, Gary Mummert came in with the li this list of things that the green team had already gotten done or were in the works. And it was a long list, and it just struck me that I often think top line, not about all the, you know, little things that have to be done. Um, so that kind of got me going down this subject. Um, 
I wanted to do something to um, show or, or talk about where we are globally. Um, and so I'm going to keep this at a very top level. Uh, most of you are aware of the 350 parts per million number that we can't have more than 350 in of CO2 in our atmosphere if we want to maintain stable climatic weather conditions. So I had thought things would have slowed down because of um, COVID. Instead, we're at 417, which parts per million of CO2. And that's really the highest it's been in recorded history. So this is a bad number. And it just pretty much shows that we've got to have more renewable energy. We've got to control our populations. Um, and we have to try new things to control them. So while I was researching this information, um, I came across a Nature Conservancy quarterly magazine. And just like here with the green team, they had a list of goals and things they wanted to get done. And I read these goals and they were, to me, they were really pie in the sky. Um, how can this happen? I don't know. But this was the quote that ended the little, their list of goals. Together, we will find a way. And that too made me angry um, because it's like magical thinking. Um, except maybe it's not. Um, you know, I tried to think of ways that maybe it wasn't magic. And sometimes um, when there's a breakthrough, technologically, a whole... Um, Num a whole number of things change. And if we think about computers in our lifetime, they've, I, you know, they've gone from being as big as a single bed mattress. You can probably, some of you remember the computer rooms to distributed computing to your own desktop computer to cell phones. And every one of those things has speeded up life and made some things easier to do. Um, so maybe there's something in this idea that together we will, you know, find a way. Um, I also, during that time, was enjoying this book, The Ministry for the Future. And ministry in this sense really means a department, not a um, congregation or a service. And this book is not great literature. It's really summer reading, but it does um, make you think. And it challenges some of the traditional views. And I found I was enjoying it quite a bit. Be and I'll just stop there. Um, when I, I talked about computers and how they've changed our lives. Um, I want to talk about money and finances in the, somewhat the same way. And you usually don't hear people stand up here and talk about money, but it, it is pertinent to changing and working together. Um, it, I looked this up, and if it, for about 5,000, about 5,000 years ago, Everything was traded by barter. You know, I'll give you some corn, you give me a duck. Um, <laughs> and it, it's kind of hard to change those things. How many ears of corn 
are equal the life of one duck. And then you get money coming in pretty strongly about 3000 BC and money leads to banks. Why? Because you can't leave your silver or gold unattended. Um, and banks um, not only can most of the time safely store money, they um, can also make loans to people. Um, and these can, you know, depending on the time you live in, these loans can be um, different for different things. Um, so banks then began to sell shares in companies, insurance popped up, um, and in my lifetime, you've gone from only being able to invest money in um, one company. In, you can buy shares in a, one company at a time, um, but mutual funds caught on and they lessened the risk for people. Um, and then um, commodities contracts, um, ETFs, and then the real speed trading puts and calls. Um, all those things have come in and they've either made life, they've made life easier or pot the potential for making money bigger, the potential for losing money even bigger. Um, but so hold on on that. Um, the I've been talking about things that got me thinking here and, and money. And um, I also want to talk about cooperation. One of the things that I was really surprised by is I've been thinking globally, but U.S. centric. And when we want to talk about the climate problem, it's not sufficient to look at the United States. The country we really have to get along with is China. Um, they, the numbers are amazing. Um, and I, I don't know how we do that. And I don't know if anybody in this room even speaks Chinese, but we certainly don't want a war with them. Right now, China's putting out, what is it, annually 10 million gillion, zillion, gazillion tons of CO2. The United States is only putting out a gazillion, excuse me, five gazillion tons of CO2 into our atmosphere. That is a huge difference. Um, so truthfully, you know, China also has four times the population we have. Um, and they're producing a lot of things we like. And we buy them. Um, all of which is contributing to thing, everything going into the atmosphere. So if we're going to ever bring the situation under control, the US and China have to work together. Um, it, to me, it seems like we are um, not moving forward. I may be wrong on this. Um, and we're going to have a little time to break into small groups after I wrap this up and talk about what our perceptions are and what we're doing to make a difference as far as climate is concerned. Um, so I mentioned US-China. Another thing we can do that you know might make a difference is if we all committed to join one environmental organization. There are a lot of them, and I'm, I'm going to be referencing the Nature Conservancy just because they got me started on this. Um, 
the reason being is this is a war and it's going to be going on for a long time and only, you know, get things are only going to get worse unless we can turn this around. Um, you may have lived through last week, I guess you all did, but the where I I was not here part of the week and the fires in Canada just were the clouds of smoke and dust and ash were really just amazing. And, you know, apparently that's going to go on for a long time now um, because it's very hard to get in to Canada where things are burning. Apparently there's few roads. Um, so if you want to get a message to your senators and representatives and you write as an individual, it carries some weight, but if you're a member of an organization, that organization can, um, come in and say, we represent a hundred thousand people or more. And they're dues paying members and they think that we need to do X, Y, Z to get things, you know, to stop this huge buildup. Whereas if you go on your own, it's like one person does not make an army. And what we need at this point is groups of people to work together. And that could mean there. It could mean doing things for the green team um, or your local land trust. Um, there are so many organizations. 350.org used to have meetings not too far from here. Um, there's, um, what's the wildlife one? I um, It'll come to me, but... There are groups that focus domestically and internationally. Um, so that's an example of something you can do at this point that might make a difference. Um, I wanted to talk as well about the Connecticut Green Bank. Anybody ever heard of that? I knew you, you would. Oh, good. Somebody else. Um, I have a degree in finance. And I try to keep up with what's going on in business and money and banking and so forth. I had never heard of it until this year. Um, the Connecticut Green Bank is, um, was established by um, an act of the Connecticut legislature in 2011. And its goal is to promote investment um, in green um, energy sources to make the state more resilient and um, adaptable. So the way it seems to be working, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is we would deposit money in the Connecticut Green Bank and buy notes, which are short term, or bonds, which are longer term, multi-year. And they pay interest. It basically just like getting a CD. The difference is the green bank is going to invest it in green-related investments. Um, and I was really kind of, um, I'm surprised and I'm going to do this. Um, and I am talking about money. You don't ever want to put all your money in one investment. But this is an interesting approach and the interest rates were definitely competitive. They aren't going to make you stunningly rich there, but they're um, competitive with other things in the market. Um, so what the Connecticut Green Bank information says is they've done 6,000 loans so far since 2011. Um, and they have one billion invested um, by 2015. They had, excuse me, a billion dollars in investments by 2015. That is pretty good. Um, 
and apparently they are investing in mostly in single family helping homeowners with single family homes or multi unit homes get the money to build solar panels somewhere. Do you want to say something, Margaret? No. Okay. All right. Um, another financial related thing that might be right for some of you um, are charitable gift annuities. Uh, and what a charitable gift annuity is, is let's say you want to save, you have money you want to save for your retirement. Um, you can go to an organization like the Nature Conservancy and give them work, excuse me, um, essentially you're going to give them at least $10,000 and they will invest it in and pay you back. They'll invest it at an agreed upon rate and pay you back after you're 65. For as long as you live, you'll get that interest rate paid you every month. So the only downside is you never get the money back. Um, but that's the way 99% of annuities are. Um, and, you know, this, at least you know the Nature Conservancy is going to be doing something to preserve the environment. In fact, they'll be doing some of their lofty goals. Um, so I, I actually have one of these for myself. Um, and I used it on a day when I was angry at my kids. And, <laughs> um, and I'd gotten some insurance money at that point. Um, and I, I like it. I like having that little extra money come in every month. Um, so, let me just see here what more I have to say. There, there is some magic that does occur when you get people all working together. Um, you know, I've seen it happen in organizations I've worked for where Someone who is just limping along is replaced, and suddenly everything starts to work better. It's so this this is not impossible. It's interesting if I look at these four things we're talking about. None of them are just the result of one person and their charisma, shall we say? U.S. China cooperation. It's going to take a lot of people to pull that off. Um, joining an environmental organization, by definition, you've got a group and you're adding to the group, hopefully. Uh, this Green Bank um, is a case of the people helping the people. Um, so again, it's, you know, it's not just a few people, though the loans are one at a time. Um, oh, and if you go online with the Connecticut Green Bank, okay, look at your bulletin down below the hearing assisted is a link to the Connecticut Green Bank and below it is a, a link and the two setting up an account with the bank. Um, it's kind of funny. I was trying to find out about this, and I was looking at the major banks like Bank of America, Citibank, and not finding any programs specifically to this, but e getting easily and quickly directed to oil exploration <laughs> Um, so it's just one of those things on how things are set up. And if we can change the way things, the organizations and the country is organized, who knows what will happen? 
So thank you for your time. And uh, we'll continue along here with the service. And where does that leave us? Um, you know, Susie Ann, we skipped uh, something here. We skipped some lights shine on your shoulders. Yes, I'm sorry about that. That's all right. I'm so good at missing things and skipping things, folks. I apologize. So, so do we want to pick up here? Sure. Uh, what a wonderful world. Yeah, right here. Music meditation. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Thank you, Marianne. That was really, that was really interesting. So we're all set. If you could all join me in the words for extinguishing the chalice. We extinguish the light, but not the light of truth, the warmth of beauty, the light of the These we carry in our hearts and out into the world until we are together again. song of celebration we'll sing together what a wonderful world thank you Good morning. A Summer Day by Mary Oliver. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean. The one who has flung herself out of the grass. The one who is eating sugar out of my hand who is moving her jaw back and forth instead of up and down, 
who was gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I don't know how to pay attention, how to fall down in the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle in the grass, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I'm doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Does everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is your plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Peace and blessings. Thank you for attending. Almost heaven. West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, moving like a breeze, country road. Oh